بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوة الا بالله لدی العظیم الحمد لله رب العالمین و صد الله على سیدنا و نبینا ابی القاسم المصطفى محمد و آله الطیبین الطاهرین لا سیما بقیت الله فی الارضین اجل الله تعالى فرجه الشریف و جعلنا من اعوانه و انصاره I am grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> for giving me this blessing and honor to be here to witness a very important step towards unity in our community and to have a little contribution. I hope what has been and is going to be discussed today would be directed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of decisions and practices. Human beings are not able to function as human beings unless they have a clear sense of their identity. So we have to have identity, but we have to have conscious understanding of our identity. If we have any object other than human beings and very maybe exceptional other creatures like jinns, and I don't want to now talk about other things, but I'm focusing on human beings. In this physical, natural, ordinary world, other than human beings, anything, any object can function without having any need for understanding itself where it comes from, what is the current situation, what's going to happen in future, and what type of relation it has to build with everything around and far. If we have here a machine, if we have here a piece of wood or stone, if we have here water or air, they don't need to think of their origin, of their future, of their relations, so that they can function. We need, as human beings, to be aware of all these things so that we can function properly. For example, suppose, if I am a student who lives in Manchester, as it was in my case from 97 to 2000. I was a student here. I was doing my PhD at the University of Manchester. So if at that time that I was a student here, I was not conscious of being a student, even if I had registered and paid my fees, but I was not conscious of being a student. I would have acted totally differently from a person who is conscious of being a student. Or, even if I was conscious of being a student, but I was not putting this aspect of my identity in its due place, and I would have considered it as the last thing that matters to me, although I am conscious of it, maybe till now I was studying here. So I had to be conscious of this, and I had to put it in the right place in the list of my priorities. Not higher than it needed, otherwise maybe it could cause lots of stress, could cause heedlessness towards my other duties, and not lower because then I could not do justice to my studies. 
So human beings need to be aware of whatever relations they have. And then at the same time to decide how to prioritize them. Let me give you another example. If you go to someone's home, based on the books that they have in their library, you get an idea about what type of personality they have. By looking at the books, you can understand. If there is no book, it gives you an indication. If there are many books, it gives you another indication. And then what type of books they have, and how many titles from each category, it gives you an idea that what type of person is this person. But also, if you see that this person on his study desk has few books taken out of the library, and these are the books that he's constantly relying on. If you see that he has many books, but Quran and Mafati and Nahjul Balagh are here, it gives you another indication. I remember one of my beloved teachers, Ayatollah Ahmad Imianaji Rahmatullah Alayhi, who used to give us akhlaq lessons. He used to say that a wise person would never put mafati on top of the Quran. So not only is it important to have Quran and mafati, but not put mafati on the top of the Quran, although mafati has many chapters of the Quran. So what I want to say is that we have to be conscious of every aspect of our identity, but also your success very much depends on how you prioritize. If you forget, or if you don't give enough attention, or if you give too much attention, you cannot have success. So now, because my time is very limited, I want to make three points. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove blockage from my tongue. A very important aspect of our understanding of identity is our relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the most important aspect of our identity. Once I had a conversation with someone about what is the meaning of abd? Who is a servant? And an idea came to my mind. And I very much think that is to be preserved and treasured. So I kept it for myself. I share it with you. If you like it, please feel free to take it with you. I said, a servant is not the one who does certain things or avoids certain things for the sake of God. A servant is not the one who has certain aqaid or practices or even virtues. A servant is the one that has no understanding of himself or herself without God. My very understanding of myself is made with my relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, if someone is really a servant, if you ask him, who are you? Or what are you? In both ways, he would say, I am a servant of God. In both ways. Not just, what are you? Even if you ask him, who are you? He would say, I am a servant of God. 
when Isa alayhi salam wanted to introduce himself in that very, very critical moment for his mother. And according to Allah's instruction, Lady Maryam gave the task to the child, to the baby, to give answer to all those people who were falsely accusing her. What did Isa alayhi salam say? Inni Abdullah. He even didn't say, I am son of Maryam. Although it's very true. And actually Allah many times referred to Isa alayhi salam as Ibn Maryam. That's very true. Certainly he was son of Maryam. Certainly he was grandchild of Imran, the father of Lady Maryam. But Isa alayhi salam says, Inni Abdullah atani al kitab wa ja'alani nabiyya wa awsani bis salati wa zakati ma dumtu hayya wa barran bi walidati wa lam yaj'alni jabbaran shaqiyya. Do you see any sense of separation from his Lord, from his master. Even when we want to talk about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we first use his name because it's very easy to refer to him by using his name. Muslims, non-Muslims, believers, non-believers all know him as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But when we say, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh, not only we highlight that his great achievement was to be a servant of Allah, but we also declare that in our understanding, the most important thing is to be a servant of Allah. And this gives us direction. We should move to this direction. This is something that needs expansion, but unfortunately there is no time. I just want to mention a beautiful story and go to the second point. When there was a slavery, and you know how Islam regulated, limited, and eradicated slavery. But he said when there was a slavery, a person went to the market for selling slaves and was looking for a good person to buy. He saw a person that looked interesting, but he had to test. He asked few questions. He said, what's your name? He said, whatever you call me. What do you eat? Whatever you give me. How much do you eat? You do it a lot because if you eat a lot, I cannot afford as much as you give me. If you give me nothing, I'm not going to complain, but you will lose your servant. <laughs> but I'm not going to complain. How much do you sleep? As much as you allow me. He said, this is the best. This has no value. It's invaluable. This is what a true servant of Allah should be. The second aspect of our identity is made by our relation with the community. The community of the faithful, headed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and our Imams and in particular Imam of our age Imam of our time, it's impossible for a Shia 
to have proper understanding of his or her identity without being always conscious of his relation with his or her imam of time. This is not just something that you learn in aqaid and whenever you are asked, you can say who are your imams and who is your imam of age. This is not going to save us from mitat al-jahiliyyah if we just have the name of imam in our stored data in the archive. Our understanding of imam, our love and devotion to imam, and our deep sense of responsibility towards imam is the one that gives us understanding of our own identity. Who can be a good soldier if he forgets his belonging to that camp? And who are his commanders? And in what order he received his commands? And to whom he should answer? You cannot function as a soldier unless you have all these things always constantly in every second in your mind. Otherwise, you become useless or maybe even enemies can capture you and use you for their own benefit. So it's very important that we should always remember our belonging to the community. I don't have time, but please refer to my lectures about collective nature of Velaya. And I have given lots of references to show that a Shia would always think of himself or herself as a member of community. We should have mentality of we and not me. There are lots of references there in du'as, in ziyarat, in the Quran. Even in your prayer, and even if you are doing furada, you must recite Surah Al-Hamd, and you must say, Iyaka na'bud, not Iyaka a'bud. Iyaka nasta'een, not Iyaka asta'een. Up to the end, Assalamu alayna, not Assalamu alayya. Allahumma inna nashku ilayka faqda nabiyyina in dua iftata. Allahumma inna nargabu ilayka. In dua in nudba, mata tarana wa narak. Not mata tarani wa arak. There is no way to separate your account from the community. There is no way to think of your well being apart from the community. A devout follower of Imam Mahdi would know that his welfare, his prosperity, his success in dunya and akhirah is guaranteed if he puts the community first and not himself or herself first. This is very, very important. And even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, he would not call us by our own personal names or by names of our parents or tribes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call us by the name of our imams and leaders to whom you have been answering for whom you have been working for Ibrahim or Namrud for Musa or Fir'aun for Imam Mahdi Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif or for others. Yawma nad'u kulla unasin bi imamihim. And there are hadith about this that I don't have time to mention. So this is very important. And then finally, I would like to highlight this important aspect that when we talk about our strong sense of understanding of belonging to community and being a servant of Allah if this is done properly if this is done with maximum sincerity and humility it would make you the most gentle person 
It would make you the most caring person for any people or even for any creatures. This is not going to make you harsh or rigid or exclusivist or extremist. This is going to make you someone that will be the restless if there is a child in any part of the world who has no food. If there is any family, Muslim or non-Muslim or even atheist, who have no sufficient means to meet their needs. A true Muslim, a true Shia, is the one that everyone in the world would know that he or she would be the best person to ask for help, to ask for advice, to entrust with their valuables, and to be sure that he would not have rest if they have pain and suffering. This is the Islam that we understand. This is the school of Ahlul Bayt that we understand. And I hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would enable us to understand our historical duty towards humanity, towards Imam of humanity, towards Imam of Nas, and not Imam of Shia only. So that inshallah, we together with other people of goodwill would work for establishing universal justice and peace and solidarity. Bi'ithnillah, insha'Allah. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillah rabbil alamin.